Flats Class fans, welcome back to our channel. This is the channel where we teach you how to be a better inshore angler, and we do it better than all the rest. Today, we're gonna to be talking about that rod and reel combo right there. That is the combo that I prefer when I'm throwing artificials to tarpon uh, early in the summer, which is rapidly approaching. In fact, I'm getting ready for a fishing school and I'm packing my gearbox right now. Um, for that school, but that rod up there gave me the inspiration to do this video. So I'm going to grab the rod. We're going to go up in the shade by the barn and, uh, and talk about the system that I put together with this that absolutely will catch you your first tarpon on artificial. It's getting to be that time of year uh, when we can start throwing artificials to laid up fish and to the first few groups that are migrating. And that's already begun. In fact, in South Florida, there's good numbers of fish, but here uh, in my area, we're just seeing scattered resident fish starting to push out of the rivers and out on the front wall. I'm noticing them because I'm out there catching these big trout and uh, we focus on the longer points right now, the rocky points for snook. And I'm starting to see the migration of southern stingrays, so I'm focused on also catching cobia. So I've got a lot of things going on right now. It's late spring. It's the last week of March before we get to April, and this has been an unseasonably warm spring. So tarpon are a little ahead of schedule. Now, I'm going to do a series of these videos with live bait setups, with my plug casting setup, but I, I thought that this would be an interesting setup because I think most of you can connect to a tarpon with this and have a legitimate shot at landing the fish um, with using certain, you know, common sense measures. So let's just talk first about the lure itself. The lure that works the best for me, I'll, I'll sit here and pull it off the, uh, the actual uh, rod here. The lure that works the best for me is the five inch jerk shads, okay? This is a bait that is very common in the Z-Man lineup. This is root beer gold. I also will use some of the lighter colors and I use purple, but root beer gold works very well. It looks a lot like a shrimp being pulled through the water. And that's really all I'm doing is I'm casting this ahead of the group of fish or the laid up fish and I'm reeling it slowly and I'll explain that technique in a minute toward the fish. Um, now I have a six aught, pull that out here for you because I brought that too. I have a six aught rigging hook here. It's one sixth of an ounce. What does that mean? Well, it's greater than an eighth and a little less than a quarter, but I promise you it's closer to a quarter. And by the time you add the soft bait that is um, filled with Procure scent, you're probably looking at this whole rig at weighing closer to a little over a quarter, maybe even closer to three eighths when you really feel it in your hand. Um, but this is a strong enough and robust enough hook and it gives me enough gap when the bait slides down that I can get a good connection to the fish. It's very sharp hooks too. They make some really good stuff. This is the chin locks hook and it's in the six aught variety if you didn't see and it's H for heavy duty. Um, so a nice big wide gap rigging hook. Still allows this bait to float high in the water column when it's swimming. So I don't want it to get down too far down. I want it to be high. I want them to come up to it. That's key. Now let's talk about my leader and braid next. All right, my braid is actually 30 pound Power Pro Super Slick V2. I use this blue color. A lot of folks say, well, why the electric looking blue color? Well, actually you see that blue sky behind me? When this line is laying up on the surface and I'm reeling it, it blends in. So the blue color is pretty handy in this scenario when you're trying to sight fish tarpon 
even if you're, you're blind casting, you know they're blurping around, it's going to be an advantage. Why 30 pound? Well, I'm using a 6,000 size reel, and we're gonna talk about that in a minute. But the 30 pound gives me enough line capacity and still enough strength because my max drag on this setup is 22 pounds. So I don't need to have 40 pound. 30 pound is adequate. So leader weight. Now I have a long leader. My leader is probably about five and a half feet long. And I'll show you what I've done here. Let me pull it out. I like showing this stuff off because kind of a knot guy. So I start off with a bimini. So I've got a, I've got a double bimini here. And it's about 10 inches long, that bimini. And then I put a no-name knot which is a very secure knot for me with a little bit of a tag. And then it's a long leader. <laughs> I mean long. Good five, five and a half feet. And then I palomar. I do not, I do not want the hingy thing. I just want a palomar knot here, double palomar knot. Or if, if you're using a different type of hook, you might go to a different knot. But I find the palomar is the strongest for me. Uh, I can leave a short tag. Now let's talk about this rod first. All right, let's talk about this rod. This is the Terramar Double X. This is one of the nicer rods that you can get for inshore salt water from Shimano. Now, this is a seven foot six length. Okay, here's the specs right here. Seven foot six, and it's a medium heavy action. I will tell you that it is a crisp, stiff, medium heavy, but I wanted medium heavy and I wanted 7.6 so that I could get some casting accuracy out of this. Remember, I'm throwing virtually an unweighted bait. There's weight there, but it's virtually unweighted. So I need this tip on this rod to make a nice, smooth, long cast. Now I'm in a, I'm in a skiff. So in my skiff, I can get typically closer than most, but many times when I'm in range of a fish, I still wanna be able to place the cast maybe 30 feet ahead of the fish, maybe more. So I, I need that, that deference, if you will. And so I'm gonna need a, a better casting um, stick. And that's why I choose this seven foot six Terramar double X. Now it'll cast everything from a half to a ounce and a half and 30 pound line is perfect for this setup actually. Um, and it does give me enough backbone, um, you know, in the rod to fight a tarpon. Now, is it the right stick to fight tarpon that weigh well over 120 pounds? Likely not. I'd probably break that fish off. Um, but for catching the variety of 50, 60, up to 100 pounds, I can do it on this responsibly uh, as long as there's not any shark activity or anything like that going on. Now, here is the real piece of equipment that you need to know about. We're going to talk about that right now. All right, the real. This is the Saragossa. This is the 6000 SW reel. I also keep 8,000s on board my skiff. And occasionally, if we're gonna throw big natural baits, I will even bring the 10,000s and really have a weapon. But these 6,000s are ideal for throwing artificials, whether I'm throwing hard baits, soft baits, or even bucktails. Um, they're the right size. They still allow me to carry about 295 yards of 30 pounds. So I've got plenty of line on here for a big run. Um, 22 pounds max drag. That's why I'll go down to 30 pounds. The whole reel weighs about 16 ounces. So it, it, it's not as heavy. Some of my friends will say, hey, you know, I'm using that SW5000 Saragossa. I go, you know, there's really zero difference between the 5,000 and the 6,000. Everything's basically the same, but they're geared a little bit different. Picks up about 41 inches of line per handle turn, and that's why I like using the 6,000 um, over some of the bigger reels that might take up a lot more line because it keeps me slowed down, and I'm, I'm remembering that. Uh, 
It's also the body is a Hagani, um, a Hagani one piece body. So that rigidity, you know, with big, powerful, strong fish is important. And all the, the gears inside are Hagani cold forged gears. Now you have X ship like you do in a lot of our higher end stuff. Um, the X shift, I'm just getting this out of my way. The X ship really is a a double supported bearing um, of the pinion gear on either end to take the pressure off. It also reduces the friction between the spool shaft and the gears themselves, which gives you better casting, longer casting with lighter lures. Uh, it also has the propulsion line management system, which is this new lip that they have. Again, allowing me for a nice long cast, reducing line twist. The only line twist I got to worry about is my folks reeling against my drag. Um, the drag is a carbon, uh, cross carbon drag. It is completely waterproof. They've got X shield on this. This is that IPX um, water resistant body. So it keeps the sand and the salt and the water out of this, this deal. Um, it has uh, five plus one. Uh, these are the shielded anti-rust bearings that are in this. So, I mean, this is the total package, um, if you will. It also has that infinity drive. Um, technology that is built into all the Saragossas, which what it really does is it allows you to crank as hard as you want when you still have a huge load from a big game fish. So it has a lot of the features at $270 that you would expect in some of the higher end stuff when you start getting into that twin power range or even the Stella range. So they've done a good job. This is kind of the blue collar workman reel um, for tarpon anglers. Uh, and I try to preach that to my guys. I was like, guys, you can buy, you know, a couple of these setups and where you might only be able to buy one or two tarpon setups with the more expensive stuff, you can buy a few more with this. And that way everyone on your, your center console bay boat, uh, or if, if you've got a bigger skiff, when you're tarpon fishing, everyone can use quality gear. And that's gonna be the difference maker when you're fighting these fish, is having quality gear. Because the one thing I know about tarpon is they're going to give you one hell of a battle and test every knot, test every piece of equipment that you have. You cannot have any weaknesses at all, at all. So I think if you follow some of these rules that I've given you with, with the bait setup, the rod and reel setup, and, and you're really driven this summer to catch a tarpon on artificial, I think I've put you on the right path. I've got you thinking. Now you can change any of this stuff any way you want, but this is a good, I'm gonna say, benchmark for you to follow and be successful with this type of setup. All right, if you're learning stuff here on my channel and you're taking it to the water and it's making a difference in your fishing, why don't you come over here and subscribe on that button? I need you to. For me to be able to produce better quality, more frequently and consistently, I need you to be in this virtual classroom each and every week, okay? All right, I'm going to pack the rest of that gear box up because JC Livingston and myself are doing a class at Sodium Fishing <laughs> this weekend here in Crystal River. And uh, any of this gear that I've showed you today, you can just go online to SodiumUSA.com and you can purchase it there. So let me get the rest of my rigging done and get ready for class. And I'll catch you guys on the next YouTube video.